Hey guys, welcome to another data recovery video. This time, one of our viewers has mailed something in and whatever it is, is very light. It almost feels empty. So let's open it up and take a look. So if you are gonna mail something in, it's totally fine. Make sure you do have a good box and some padding to protect whatever it is and a tracking number. Um, It'll be nice and safe to deliver things that way. Okay. We have a water damaged laptop. Um, a caravan had a laptop sitting underneath an aircon unit and the aircon was defrosting and dripping into the laptop for a few hours before they noticed. Uh, the, lap the laptop has died and they have removed an SSD. Okay, wow. Okay, nice little static bag. So this is good if you're gonna mail things, box, padding, static bag. So there it is, that's why it's so light. SSD inside, so let's figure out what this water damage has done to this SSD. Okay, first things first. It's an M key. They've got a little M here printed. That's the key there. That's for PCI Express. SEC 104 Samsung SSD. And it's a single chip. So the memory and the controller is all embedded in one chip. And my light is flickering there. Now, up here we've got electronic fuse protection and we've got some power regulation. So very simple, very cheap SSD. Um, although they call it a HDD, this sticker says it's a hard drive, HDD, okay, that's weird, I have never seen that before, HDD date, CS2144, so, uh, I'm not familiar with these codes, but the hard drive has got 512 gigs, and it was manufactured 12th of April 2021, so that is effectively, as of 2024 it's lasted three and a half years but this one has been damaged externally via a leaking air conditioner so let's have a look on the back condition looks okay and we've got another sticker that's going to tell us the model now first thing I noticed with this sticker is it looks like someone has actually removed it and stuck it randomly here off center so i think that would have been covering these electronics here so someone has had a bit of a peekaboo on the electronics now my led is flickering can you guys see that i'm gonna fix that and come back so this ssd model is a pm991 nvme 512 gig we knew that from the other side model mz vlq5120 um Made in China. Okay, so let's run some tests and figure out, is it actually working? Let's plug it in and take a look. Okay, no activity. It's definitely not detecting. That is hot. What the? Okay, there's definitely something wrong with this SSD. So maybe the liquid damage laptop has shorted out this SSD. So let's take a closer look. There's not a lot of electronics here. Basically got an input for an e-fuse. I'm just, I'm just testing the multimeter. I'm just testing the multimeter in beat test mode and I'm looking for any short circuits. That's okay. That's okay. That's an inductor. That's normal. Okay, we've got something here that is shorted to ground. So this line here, which means this capacitor as well. Yes, and this inductor here, which looks like it's the output of this voltage regulator. What's that, PD5Q? Uh, we've got another one down here. Let's keep looking. That's okay. That's okay. And we got two, is it in pair? They're okay. A uh, little one down here, we'll have a quick look. So this output of this regulator has gone bad, short to ground. So two capacitors, 
What's that, a resistor? That should be okay. So basically, our options are really, I doubt it's the inductor because it can't go short to ground. The only two things it can be is this regulator or these two capacitors. Let's have a look with the camera, the thermal camera, and we'll see if we can get some better information. So the thing that's heating up is this little regulator and this output um, inductor. So I doubt it's the inductor. It'd be nice if it was one of these capacitors, but it's most likely this inductor. Uh, unless something else in of an input. No, I don't think any other input can short this out. Um, it's possibly this little chip and it's possibly been damaged by the liquid damage somehow. So um, unless we can see something very obvious with one of these capacitors, let's zoom in and uh, see if there's maybe something obvious. The capacitors look like they're in good condition. There's no discoloration, there's no bulging. Well, what's that on the side of this one? There's something down there. Hmm, what is that? I don't know if you can see. There's something just there. Let's try and get in a bit closer. Can you guys see that? What the hell is that? On the side of the capacitor there. It looks okay, but... See, I'm looking for holes or things, something that's showing that the capacitor is damaged going short to ground. Let's let's see what that is. Oh, that's just a little piece of debris, maybe, manufacturing debris. Something's been chipped off from somewhere. Oh, it's a, it looks like it's a piece of the coating for the capacitors. It's too small, and underneath it looks okay. It must have just been sitting there. That capacitor looks like it's in good condition. Um, same with the other one that's on the same short circuit line. Hmm. They look like they're in good condition. My gut instinct says it's this little regulator. If it was a capacitor, that would be the thing heating up. Basically, that would be the resistance causing the short. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop this little chip out of circuit, and I'm going to see if our short circuit disappears. Okay, so I'm going to pop this little chip out of circuit. We just have to make note the orientation. See the little dot down there? Let's just pretend that that little dot there, as long as it goes back the same way, will be fine. We've basically got a 50-50 chance anyway. A little bit of flux in there. The other challenge is if I if this is faulty, where am I going to get another one from? Generally, these part numbers don't mean anything. You can't just look them up easily. You can't just get one mailed out. So I'll have to figure all that out as well. But first things first, let's take it out of circuit. It's got three pins on the left, four pins on the right, and possibly a big ground. Whoop, there she goes. Okay, that is an unusual pin out on the bottom there. It's got three lines and four pins there. A little resistor almost knocked out of place. Okay, there's a dot. So what's it look like underneath? Oh, wow. That is unusual. That's a cool little pin out design. So let's see if the short circuit has disappeared. It's a bit hard to see, but I've zoomed in a little bit because I'm trying to find out which actual pinout of that chip we removed is the one shorted, and I believe it's this middle one. And it's still shorted to ground by the look of it. Yeah, so that inductor's shorted. That is shorted. That is still shorted. Okay, this line here is not shorted. 
So I'm assuming that's the output line. I'm not sure if that's meant to be... Oh, that's all part of it too? That's hard to tell. Okay, in a way that's good news. I'm hoping that little chip isn't shorted. Let's keep going and let's remove this capacitor. And she's out of circuit. While we're here, let's test... Hear that beep? Something is still shorted out here. One more capacitor remove, and then I'm wondering what the hell this is. Okay, let's do another short circuit test. And all of that is still shorted to ground. So what is left that can be influencing this line is only in the CPU now. Let's look around and make sure. So everything is still shorted to ground. I'm going to get in a bit tighter and check these capacitors here. They obviously go underneath this big CPU and everything is embedded into the one chip which makes it very difficult to solve if, if the problem's in here. So let's have a look. We've got a lot of capacitors along here. That's okay. Beep. That's okay. So one side will be ground and the other side will be a circuit. Okay, here we go. We've still got a short circuit on this capacitor. Now, I highly doubt it's anything here now, and it has to be the chip. So we'll have another look with the thermal camera. Okay, that one too. So these two are shorted to ground. Are they connected to this? I can't really see if that flux. There you go, another one. Okay, so all in this area here is still shorted to ground. Hmm. Could it be one of these caps? I don't know. Let's repower it with the thermal camera and we'll see what happens now that we've got some components removed. And now nothing is heating up. These circuits are all fine. So I've got another PM991 here. What I'm going to do is get some voltages. It's got very similar readout to the faulty one. So I'll just show you this on the microscope so you can see what I'm talking about. This one here produces 1.8 volts. This one's around 1 volt and down here 2.5 volts which must be the NAN, the memory. So part of these two. Interesting. So this is starting to look like the most likely candidate for this problem is the actual CPU that's uh, embedded. Um, which means I can't really do a lot because the whole chip and the CPU is all embedded into the one system. And I don't really have an exact working one to do some more research. But what I'm going to do is swap this chip in this position, swap these chips around. Um, and see if I get the same results, same initial results. So what will probably happen if I put this chip here, if this chip is okay or the original chip is okay, it's probably being overdriven and heating up due to the problem with the CPU. But this will give me a little bit more information to confirm that. So. I just got to align the chip. So I've just lined up this chip and I'm going to try and solder it back into position. So remember, this is the chip that was here, and now we're going to put it, swap it with here. They're the same chips based on the code. They have different outputs based on the resistors that they set. 
whatever the tech data sheet is. And if this chip was the problem, then we would see it have a problem in this circuit. So this is the test I'm doing. Get this hot air up to temperature. There we go. Now we just got the capacitors at the top there, so one and two. Yeah. What do you think? So I think what's going to happen is the CPU is the problem and it's just pulling this circuit down the ground and creating them to heat up. These chips have been swapped around. If it was originally this chip, it's now here. So it would cause this circuit to heat up, but I doubt that's going to happen. This is going to give me some more confirmation that this CPU... Now everything's in the one chip, so I can't really do a lot if the CPU is the problem now because it's embedded with the memory so that can't be replaced let's clean this up we'll let it cool down and we'll do a test so yes different chip same problem I've swapped the chip around and it's heating up just like the original chip was heating up and you can see the CPU to the left is heating up and that's the, the same circuit so what I'm going to do here is just probe the voltages for research purposes for this Samsung PM991. Now up here, this regulator provides the logic, so it should be 1.8 volts. It's a little bit low on this one, but I know that should be around 1.8. Now this one should be close to 1 volt. So I'm going to check it live with this problem and we are not getting we're basically not getting any output at all we'll check these capacitors yeah so we're not getting any voltage here this is all being drawn down the ground and I think it's a CPU this one down here I, I believe powers a NAND and it's around 2.5 volts so it's a bit low but it does give us some information and for me to continue to do better research to solve data recovery problems when these fail. I'm going to continue to collect these and um, try and get some better information with working ones. So here's another PM991 SSD that I have. This one's a, what do they call it? 28, 2830 I believe. A uh, smaller profile one. It does have issues as well but it's got better uh, working regulators. So if I show you the output of the E-fuse, around 3 volts. Now if we get into this regulator, it should be our 1.8. Bang on. Now if we come down to this one, there you go, close to 1 volt. That's bang on for the core. And our NAND, 2.5 volts. So here's a demonstration of one that is in better working condition. So I'll continue to do more research on the Samsung PM991 SSD for data recovery solutions. If you want to find more information on, on my reports to these devices, I'll leave a link in the description and I'll see you guys in the next video.